Greetings, Ayivi here. Thank you for watching. We are in the maids' quarters looking over materials that have been purchased for the Andui phase of painting. Our plan for painting has two steps. The first step, which is at this time, is to apply two quarts of Andui and required sanding to all interior walls. Then we will go off and work on a number of other things related to finishings, like kitchen cabinets, like windows, uh, like circuit breakers. And then when all those other items are done, we'll come back for the second step of painting where we will apply paint to all interior and exterior walls. That is the plan. I do hope you enjoyed this video because it is dedicated to the very first court of Andui. So mind you, uh, we would not be applying any additional quotes of Andui to the false ceilings and the crown moldings at this time. If you like what you see, kindly give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment, and if you've not already subscribed, kindly do so. Share this video with family and friends. Thanks in advance. The first quote of Andui is being applied. During this stage, the false seedings and the crown moldings will be left untouched. On the floor, you see um, residue from sanding of the bare walls. Andui is the French word for coating. So therefore, Andui is used to prepare walls and ceilings before painting. Andui has a fluid pasty consistency. When dry, is non-absorbent, smooth, and acts as a protective coat. Andui contains binders and mineral fillers. Here, we have added glue. I think you saw that in the maid's quarters. We have added white glue uh, to add to the binding capability of the Andui we are using. Andui isolates and clearly defines a non-absorbent support layer for paint. So that when you come along and you apply paint, you will use less paint than if you did not apply Andui. Remember, Andui is non-absorbent. So therefore, when you touch it with paint, it stays on that surface. It doesn't seep through the layer of Andui that has been applied on the wall. So you will use less paint.
I would like at this time to discuss how it is that I selected the current contractor for Andui and ultimately the paint job. Uh, I did select uh, Mr. Gobitaka. He is the gentleman who um, worked on the false ceilings and the crown moldings. Uh, it wasn't an automatic selection. So let me tell the story ever so briefly. I started out with eight prospective uh, painters, uh, some of whom came from Facebook. I found them on Facebook. I invited down, them down to the site. They took a look closely and furnished estimates. So, you know, the eight of them yielded six estimates. So two of them were not very serious. So after receiving the six estimates, I sat down and I had all the data I needed to make the decision. Uh, from the architectural plans, I had the total um, square area surfaces of the interior walls, the ceilings, and the exterior walls. So I have those uh, square meters as given. I also understood that the Andui was sold in 30 kilogram buckets, as you saw. So with some research, uh, I was able to determine how much on average a 30 kilogram bucket of Andui would cover. How many square meters of wall or ceiling would um, a 30 kilogram bucket cover? Once I had that number, and, and again, here our walls are relatively, relatively smooth, so that average number would cover it. Uh, when your walls are not smooth, they are rough and have to be smoothened out, then you're going to need more Andui. Okay, so I've, I have those given. So I was able to sit down and I was able to calculate how many buckets, given the total square area of the interior, uh, is required for, for the Andui job. And I was able to do the same for the paint job. But now we're talking Andui. Once I had my estimate, I went through the various um, quotations that I got from the six vendors. And I narrowed the list down to two of them. Their Andui quantities were reasonably close to what I had calculated. Um, the numbers were all over the place. There were some who had front-loaded the Andui so that they can make money, obviously, up front, a lot of it. Um, you know, so I was able to weed those uh, other um, estimates out. So now I was left with two uh, contractors. One of them happened to be Mr. Gobitaka, who I had done business with. Uh, he, you know, if you've watched any of the videos, I would advise that you should go watch uh, the video having to do with false ceilings and crown moldings. I, I was very, very satisfied with his work. He was very professional. Uh, so it was an easy choice for me to say, yeah, his, his specialty is not painting. His specialty is false ceilings and crown moldings. But I'll take the risk. He's told me that he does painting, um, you know. So at a minimum, my my ceilings, my ceilings and crown moldings would turn out fine. So, so that's how I, I made the decision. Um, so to summarize, you need to know what the total square area surface is of your walls, interior, exterior and also the ceilings. A very critical piece of data if you're going to be building that you should have. The rest is just arithmetic uh, and talking to people. Um, I'm not going to talk about price because everybody knows that we are in, a, in an inflationary environment. What is important is the quantity. 
the number of buckets. Wow! We've come full circle back into the maid's quarters where we started this video. Um, before we wrap, let's take a quick look at progress that has been made in the bedrooms upstairs. Thank you for your patience. Okay, folks, the first coat of Andui is still in progress. I hope you have enjoyed the video and that you'll come back to the channel to watch some more videos. Thank you very much. Until next time, this is Ayivi saying cheers. Cheers to you.